Hi everyone, it's Heidi again. If you are new here, I'm an American who went out of the country for the first time a few months ago and I am sharing my experience now. <laughs> it was kind of a big deal for me and so I'm loving having discussions with you guys about my experience, what your guys' experiences are. I'm loving this. Last time we covered Frankfurt, Germany, and today we're going to talk about Cologne or Köln. <laughs> in German, but Cologne is a lot easier for us Americans to say, so we'll stick with that one. If you like the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Also, come see me on Twitch. I live stream, so I love talking with you guys about this kind of stuff live. Come say hi, I would love to meet you. So the reason why we decided to get an Airbnb in Frankfurt was actually because I needed to visit Cologne. I don't know if you guys remember when we reacted to the video, This is Germany, but I saw a cathedral in that video and I had to find out where it was, um, what it was called so that we could go visit it. That's honestly one of the main reasons why we went to Germany for this last trip. <laughs> I don't know what it was. I just, I had to go visit it. And we'll be talking about that in just a few minutes. I loved it. The only thing that we knew about Cologne was the cathedral, but I have to say that I loved just the entire city, at least the main, really busy area that we were in, I really enjoyed. It was actually Hale Hubby's 100% favorite place to visit on our entire Europe trip. But because I loved Frankfurt and Cologne, I, I can't really decide which one I liked better. So from Frankfurt to Cologne, we took a double-decker train. That was the first time I'd ever experienced that before. And just like the high-speed train, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really pretty comfortable. It was like being on a plane, but on a train. Um, and for the first time I got to actually use the, the restroom when on a train. I don't know why I had never done that before. And it was basically like a plain restroom, but it was just a little bit bigger. It wasn't so cramped like an airplane bathroom. I don't know why I like this so much, but the door to the bathroom slid like open and shut very smoothly. And I really appreciated that for some reason after being in so many airplane bathrooms. It was just kind of refreshing, I don't know. And just to use a bathroom for the first time on a moving vehicle, whether it's a train or a plane or a boat or something like that, it's always just kind of fun and interesting to me. I don't know if I'm the only one. Let me know if you feel the same way. So the first thing that I ate in Cologne was a pretzel. I just thought it would be kind of fun to try it in Germany, obviously. It was fine. Probably train station pretzels aren't the best quality, so, but it was still fun to have a pretzel in Germany, I guess. But it was basically anything that you could get in the United States, so. It was really nice because the train station was close enough to the cathedral that we just walked there. It was so lovely. Ah, I just, I wish, that I lived in an area that it made sense to walk places. I just loved walking when we were in Europe, anywhere. <laughs> and Cologne was a very pretty place. It was very green, um, really nice walkways. It was a nice place to walk around in. So we arrived at the bridge that takes us across to the cathedral. It was really cool. So I had to get some pictures while we had a really nice view of the bridge and the cathedral. It was so fun. I was really excited because it was the first time that I'd seen this cathedral in real life that I've been wanting to see for months. It was just a very special moment for me, so I loved that. So we started to cross the bridge and we did not know that this would be the case, but the bridge was one of those bridges that had a bunch of locks on it. I don't know if you guys have seen this before or heard of this, you probably have, but I think that it's for couples maybe? I don't know if it's just for kind of a romantic gesture, but people put little locks on bridges or or walls or things like that. I think it's to lock in your love or something. Let me know if there's some other meaning to that. <laughs> but it was packed with locks. It was insane. <laughs> I was actually concerned, like the bridge was probably getting too heavy, but it was really, really cool to see. Actually, Hale Hubby loved this part of the trip. He thought it was so neat to see all of these locks everywhere. <laughs> Locks were actually like connected to other locks because there wasn't enough room. And my favorite part about this was that there were some locks that were in very, very creative places on this bridge. Places so high up that you know someone had to climb up to put it up there. 
just some people be crazy. And it was also cool because there were really small locks and then there were really big chunky looking locks. And it was really quite beautiful to look at as well. And it was funny because as we got into town, we did a little bit of shopping and noticed that there were no locks being sold anywhere. <laughs> which totally makes sense and I'm glad that they're doing that. I wonder if there's some kind of regulation that you're not allowed to sell locks. I wonder how that was put in place because they were nowhere to be found and it was so funny. So about a month before we went on the trip, I was looking up the cathedral, just pictures where it was. I noticed that there was a picture of a statue of a man on a horse, but it was facing the cathedral. So if you stand in the right place, it, <laughs> you can get a picture of the cathedral with a horse's ass. And I really, I don't know why, but I needed that to happen. I needed to have a picture of me with the horse, with the cathedral in the background. And I am pleased to announce that we did get the shot. Very, very proud moment for me. I just think it's so funny. I don't know why, <laughs> because I'm very mature. So of course, my absolute favorite part of visiting Cologne was the cathedral itself. I would hope that's why we were there. It was under a little bit of construction on the outside, but I did not mind. It was so beautiful. It was extremely intricate. The thing that drew me in the most when I first saw it in the video and when I saw it in real life was the the kind of burnt gothic look to it. It was just something that I feel is very unique to a cathedral. I thought it was so cool looking and kind of made it like a little bit dark. Something that I was absolutely not ready for was just how much detail was put into this cathedral. We could have been there for days, just looking at everything in and out of this cathedral, and you still would not notice all of the little things that went into it. It's just so, so much. <laughs> so I looked up a little bit of the history of the cathedral while we were just in the courtyard looking up at it, and I did not know this, but it took about 600 years to build this cathedral from start to finish. I just love that so much. It blew our minds. And the one thing that we were talking about for a while was just thinking about all of the people who contributed to this cathedral, especially when it was first being built in the 1200s, who probably knew that they would not live to see the finished product. I think that is so amazing because times have changed since the 1200s. <laughs> I blame the internet, honestly, so grateful for it. It's really funny though, how our patience levels have just plummeted. We are just so accustomed to everything happening so fast, getting the results quick. Even if a web page takes more than 10 seconds to load, I feel like we give up on it and we get frustrated. So to think that so many generations and so many people put their lives into building this cathedral without even being able to see the finished product, is really cool to me and very inspiring. Human beings are crazy. It's just, that was so awesome to learn about. So that was just the outside of the cathedral. We went inside after that <laughs> and I was just blown away by how big it was first of all, but then how much detail again went into the inside of the building. There were different rooms, different kind of sections of the cathedral that had, I'm assuming, different historical significance. There were, I think, a lot of saints or a lot of uh, religious figures who were featured. There were statues and um, it was awesome because there were different types of styles as well, which also was so cool to see knowing that it took 600 years to build. How many different artists, how many different sculptors, different architects, different interior designers, went into this cathedral with all these different styles and tastes, but they all worked together to put this beautiful work of art together. It was just, uh, it was so cool. <laughs> and unfortunately, I didn't know a lot of the history that was being featured. I knew a little bit. Um, I grew up, you know, reading the Bible and stuff like that. I'm not religious anymore, but I, I am familiar with Christianity. So there was that, but I could definitely see historians just having a ball visiting this cathedral. I feel like there were probably a lot of hidden gems that were really significant historically. I'd love to learn more about all that went into it. It's just fascinating to me. One thing that I thought was really silly was that there was a cathedral gift shop. I guess I'm not too surprised by that. There were actually some really cool things in it. There were photographs, books with information about the cathedral. I really should have gotten one. But the thing that caught our eye was 
actually a bottle of liquor. It says cathedral liquor, I think. I, I should go get it. Okay, I have it. <laughs> Cologne Dom liquor. <laughs> and I thought that was so funny. I'm just like, um, all right, that, that's cool. Get inspired and then get drunk. But it was kind of embarrassing to go up to the cashier and be like, hey, I know that there are a lot of like really pretty and very historically significant things in here. Um, how much is your alcohol? <laughs> Ugh. We still haven't opened it, obviously. I almost don't want to open it because it's so cool and it's just a fun part of our trip, but we'll have to open it and try it sometime. And I'll have to let you guys know. So after exploring the cathedral, we went to a nearby restaurant. Uh, we went to a pretty traditional looking German restaurant. They had the, you know, big, pints of beer and the, the sausage and, and stuff like that. So we thought it would be fun. So to start with the beer, it was so funny. <laughs> I loved this part of our trip. So we sat down, we, we ordered the same thing. We ordered the same beer. For those of you who don't know, my husband is about a foot taller than me and a, a bit larger than I am. And so the waitress actually brought two different sizes of beer in two different glasses. <laughs> it was so funny to me. Honestly, it was the perfect amount of beer for me though. So I'm glad that she did that, but that cracked me up. <laughs> and also the beer was really good. It wasn't too weedy. It had like a nice flavor, which is exactly what I like. And in fact, every restaurant that we went to and we ordered beer at was absolutely fantastic. Like they know what they're doing. So the dishes that we ordered at this restaurant were so delicious. I got a braised beef with potatoes and purple cabbage or something. And then Hale Hubby got the bratwurst, like a few different kinds of bratwurst and uh, sauerkraut. And the sauerkraut was pretty good. I'm not the biggest fan of sauerkraut, but I think they did a good job. Something that was crazy though, was how big these dishes were. It was a lot of food. We were sitting there staring at it like, and they make fun of Americans for how big our portions are. So we were laughing about it and we, we actually joked with the waitress about it. And it was so funny because she said, well, people don't generally order this during the summertime. These are very winter foods. For those of you who don't know, we went in the middle of July. And so I kind of wish she would have warned us or maybe I should keep in mind that I should ask for recommendations more often, but I thought that was so funny. So we did not finish them. It was way too much food, but what we ate was very, very delicious. One of the stereotypes that we absolutely confirmed while we were in Germany, specifically in Cologne, was the obsession of gummy candies in Germany. It's not a lie, it, it's a thing. <laughs> every grocery store we went to, every convenience store just had a wall or a stand filled with different kinds of packaged gummies. It's freaking adorable, honestly. We even came across, as we were walking through Cologne, a gummy, shop solely <laughs> dedicated to gummy candies of all kinds. I loved it. There were just rows and rows of just barrels of different kinds and shapes and colors of gummies. And I'm sure that the barrels weren't filled all the way to the bottom, but the visual was chef's kiss. It was so good. <laughs> and they all looked really good, honestly. Um, a lot of them had like a, probably a sour coating and they were big too. Like there were some really big gummies. It was so funny to me. I think the only gummy that did not look appetizing was they just had a life-size banana shaped gummy. It just looked like a straight up banana and it probably tasted like banana flavor. I'm not the biggest fan of like banana candy. So that looked honestly disgusting, but everything else looked so good. We didn't get any because I think we had just had dinner or something and we were not hungry. We'd already bought a lot of stuff, but that was quite an experience and I'm so happy that we came across that. And the last but very important thing I want to mention before we end the video is, you guessed it, one of our favorite topics, toilets. Why? I don't know. I know that uh, some of you guys have asked in the comments why I'm so obsessed with toilets. I don't think I'd call it an obsession. I'm just saying toilets keep surprising me for weird reasons. <laughs> so I had to stop by a bathroom while we were walking through a mall in Cologne. And I guess the first thing was I did have to pay a euro to use the restroom, which is a little bit unusual for the United States. If you're in a mall already or in a public place, you don't usually have to pay to use the bathroom. Sometimes they'll have a little pass where you have to go ask for it and it's a key that you can get into it, but it's very, very rare that you have to pay to use a restroom. So that was a little bit different. Thank goodness that was the only time that I had to do that while we were out there. But 
The thing that was so fascinating to me and that I'd never seen before was, I, okay, so I, everything was normal. Everything seemed pretty European <laughs> when it comes to toilets. But after I flushed, I noticed that there was another option, a little sensor on top of the toilet. I didn't know exactly what it was for, but I gave it a shot. I was not prepared, but <laughs> it basically cleaned the entire toilet seat. I'd never seen something like this before. The toilet seat itself kind of like turned around and there was something that went on top of it that just cleaned it as it rotated. I thought it was so cool. <laughs> have you guys seen this before? Is, is this a little more rare? I don't know. But I would love to have more of this in public places in the United States and just in places in general because I am constantly using toilet paper to like wipe down the seat or trying to use the super thin, really flimsy tissue paper to kind of set on top, make sure that I balance it correctly and it doesn't fall into the toilet because toilet seats are nasty. And I thought this was really cool that there was a self-cleaning feature in the middle of a mall. Let's make that a thing more often. Love that. So I actually think about that all the time now and I just, I want it everywhere. But on that lovely note, thank you so much again for letting me share my experience with you guys here on YouTube. Thank you for making this trip possible. This was life changing. I learned so much and I'm, I'm excited to go on our next trip whenever that might be. But stay tuned, our next video is going to be about Italy and our experience there. But thank you so much again and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.